Hello, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jacob Laubach. I'm the clinical director of the multiple myeloma uh, program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And I'll be reviewing with you uh, results of a 24 month analysis um, uh, of the Griffin trial. Um, uh, this is a randomized uh, phase two study evaluating uh, daratumumab plus lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone, or RVD, in patients with transplant-eligible, newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Um, I know that this audience is uh, very familiar with uh, daratumumab, which is a CD38 um, targeting monoclonal antibody. Uh, that has been approved in both uh, relapsed and newly diagnosed uh, multiple myeloma on the basis of uh, numerous phase three clinical trials as uh, summarized here. Uh, the slide also depicts the various mechanisms of anti-tumor activity associated with uh, daratumumab. Uh, the primary analysis of this uh, study um, uh, has been uh, previously published. Um, and in that prior analysis, uh, it was clearly demonstrated that the addition of daratumumab to RVD induction therapy led to significant improvements in stringent complete response rates by the end of post-transplant consolidation therapy. We had also seen with previous analysis that there was deepening of response as measured by MRD negativity, uh, both following the post-transplant consolidation uh, uh, phase of treatment, as well as in the aftermath of one year of post-transplant maintenance. It's important that in these previous analyses, the addition of daratumumab was found to be safe uh, with um, uh, an overall favorable uh, safety or uh, toxicity uh, profile. So what we're, uh, we were reporting here are the results of an, ex, uh, an, an, an analysis of extended treatment of uh, patients uh, in the Griffin trial um, uh, following completion of two years of maintenance therapy with either daratumumab plus lenalidomide or lenalidomide alone. This is the schema of uh, the study. Uh, as it shows, um, patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either standard RVD induction therapy uh, or RVD plus daratumumab. After four cycles of induction therapy, patients underwent a single autologous stem cell transplantation. They then received two cycles of uh, consolidation therapy followed by maintenance with either daratumumab and lenalidomide or lenalidomide alone. The primary endpoints of the study um, uh, as well as secondary endpoints are shown on the right. These are the uh, characteristics of uh, patients uh, included in the study, and as you can see, they were balanced across the uh, two uh, treatment arms. This uh, uh, shows uh, patient uh, disposition uh, in terms of patients in both arms who were treated with maintenance therapy, um, who completed maintenance therapy, and um, patients who discontinued treatment during the maintenance phase of treatment and the reasons for discontinuation among uh, such patients. So the study um, with extended follow-up uh, shows once again that there is a significant difference in response rate as measured by uh, stringent complete uh, response uh, in these two groups. As you can see, after two years of maintenance therapy, the um, uh, rate of greater than complete response rate or better is 82% uh, in patients who received daratumumab 
versus 61% in patients who received standard RVD therapy. This shows rates of MRD negativity at a sensitivity of 10 to the negative five after two years of maintenance therapy. And in the, what we call the intention to treat analysis, uh, the rate of MRD negativity after two years of maintenance therapy was 62% in daratumumab-treated patients versus 27% in patients who received RVD therapy. Um, among MRD-evaluable patients, those being uh, patients where the samples uh, could be obtained and proper, properly processed to perform the MRD analysis, the differences were even a bit more striking with an 81% rate of MRD negativity among patients who received DRVD and 44% for patients who received RVD. This uh, particular slide looks at uh, rates of MRD negativity um, at the end of induction, consolidation after one year of maintenance therapy and after two years of maintenance therapy in the two arms. And as you can see uh, in the legend below the, the, uh, um, the figure, the um, light shaded purple and orange uh, pertain to the 10 to the minus five threshold and the darker shades pertained to um, the 10 to the minus six threshold. And you can see that for the study group as a whole, as was mentioned before, the MRD negativity rate at a sensitivity of at least 10 to the minus five was 64% in patients who received daratumumab versus 30% in patients who received RVD. Also important to see that at the sensitivity of 10 to the minus six, the MRD negativity rate after two years of maintenance was 36% in patients who received daratumumab versus 15% in patients who received RVD. We also thought it was striking that in the daratumumab treated patients, if you look specifically at the MRD analysis with uh, uh, MRD sensitivity of 10 to the minus six. The MRD negativity rate went from 21% after one year of maintenance to 36% after two years of maintenance therapy with daratumumab and lenalidomide, suggesting that inclusion of daratumumab as a component of maintenance therapy contributed significantly to the deepening of responses over time. Whereas looking at the RVD treated patients who received post-transplant maintenance with lenalidomide only, there was very little difference in MRD negativity rates um, at either 10 to the minus five or 10 to the minus six uh, at one year and two year of uh, maintenance therapy. This slide shows the rates of sustained MRD negativity, or in other words, how long is a patient staying in an MRD negative state? And you can see, and this is uh, data pertaining to analysis with uh, MRD at sensitivity of 10 to the minus five, but you can see that 48% um, of patients treated with daratumumab maintained MRD negativity for six or more months versus 15% in those patients treated with RVD. And in looking at sustained MRD negativity for 12 or more months, the rate was 44% versus 13%. Also important to highlight, um, and this is perhaps not an unexpected finding, that the rates of disease progression amongst patients who achieve durable MRD negativity at six or 12 or greater months was very low. And in fact, 
no patients in the study who achieved sustained MRD negativity lasting 12 months or more have yet progressed um, while being treated on the study. This is a subgroup analysis um, uh, of the study um, and the impact of addition of daratumumab for different subgroups. And as you can see, the critical takeaway finding here is that the addition of daratumumab led to improvement in uh, MRD, negative, MRD negative rates um, in essentially all subgroups evaluated. This is the uh, progression-free survival data um, after um, uh, three years of follow-up and um, several important, important points to make here. You'll notice that the, uh, these progression-free survival or Kaplan-Meier curves are basically superimposable upon one another until roughly here, which is about 22 months of uh, treatment. And then the, the, the curves begin to uh, diverge. At 24 months, the two-year PFS rate was approximately 92% um, in the DRVD arm and 90% in the RVD arm. And with three-year um, uh, analysis, the three-year progression-free survival rate was approximately 89% in the DRVD group and 81% in the RVD group. So um, it's evident here that uh, there is um, further divergence of these curves over time as patient, patients are uh, treated with um, extended treatment in the maintenance context. You'll see that the hazard ratio, ratio was 0 0.46. Um, the confidence interval here did cross one, so we would say that this uh, is um, suggestive of a strong trend towards benefit with the addition of uh, DARA RVD, um, but that it has not yet reached uh, the level of statistical significance. This is um, uh, um, data on the overall survival um, in what is called the intention to treat population. And you can see here that the overall survival of these patients at three years uh, is essentially uh, the same at this point in time. In terms of um, side effects, um, the addition of uh, daratumumab um, was generally associated with a favorable toxicity profile as I mentioned before, and with longer follow-up, um, this observation has continued to hold true. Uh, if you look specifically at the hematologic toxicities, it's evident that there was a higher rate of any grade um, uh, toxicity, but in comparing, and, and, a, and, a, and a higher rate of, of um, grade three um, for uh, toxicities uh, as well. However, if you look uh, at the non-hematologic uh, toxicities, it's clear that while there was a difference in any grade toxicities, uh, the rates of higher grade toxicities or grade three and four toxicities was pretty similar um, across um, the two treatment groups. And this is uh, further information uh, related to toxicities uh, associated with uh, the two different treatment arms. So these were the conclusions uh, that were drawn um, uh, from this uh, particular analysis. Uh, it was concluded that these results support daratumumab plus RVD as induction, post-transplant consolidation, and daratumumab plus lenalidomide maintenance as an effective treatment regimen for individuals with transplant eligible, newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. MRD negativity rates at 10 to the minus five and 10 to the minus six were highest for 
uh, DRVD induction therapy and consolidation, followed by uh, DARA lenalidomide maintenance therapy. Um, DRVD um, followed by DR maintenance was associated with deeper levels of MRD negativity. And as we had discussed before, a deepening of those MRD negativity or MRD negativity over time. Um, the rates of sustained MRD negativity were also higher for patients uh, treated with daratumumab from the time of induction uh, through uh, maintenance and that there was benefit in this regard across uh, all subgroups of patients, including patients with higher risk um, uh, cytogenetic uh, features. There's a strong positive trend towards improved progression-free survival uh, with this um, analysis following completion of two years of maintenance therapy. And it's quite clear that the addition of daratumumab to uh, lenalidomide as a component of maintenance therapy was well tolerated. These uh, data then support the phase three Perseus study of D, uh, VRD followed by DR maintenance therapy compared with VRD therapy alone, uh, followed by R alone and transplant eligible newly diagnosed myeloma and suggest that this is a favorable treatment choice for uh, patients with newly diagnosed transplant uh, eligible multiple myeloma. Um, I would like to um, acknowledge all of the patients who participated uh, in the study and um, their family members, all of the investigators who participated in the study, uh, the, the many staff members who contributed to the study across study sites, the data review and safety monitoring committees, the Alliance Foundation trials, and our colleagues uh, at Janssen. Thank you.